بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Continuing with the uh, Tafsir classes Today we will uh, talk about Surah Al-Duha And as it's been the habit We uh, identify the Surah Whether it's Meccan or Medinan And give the names And the reason of revelation if any And then we go into the core of the, uh, of the Surah This Surah, Surah Al-Duha Is a Meccan uh, surah according to the consensus of the scholars of tafsir it was revealed after uh, surah al-fajr and before surah al-inshirah the name of the surah is al-duha the reason of revelation uh, the scholars mentioned two based on two different narrations both of which were reported by Al-Imam Al-Bukhari in his Sahih and both of which were uh, narrated by Jundub radiyallahu anhu Al-Bujali or Jundub ibn Sufyan the first narration said that Jibreel uh, salam, was delayed in descending upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so a woman from Quraysh said that the devil of Muhammad uh, has abandoned him so the surah was revealed. The other narration uh, states, and as I said, it's also reported by Imam Bukhari, states that the Prophet ﷺ became unwell, became ill, and therefore he couldn't pray Qiyam for two to three nights. So uh, a woman came and said to him, وسلم, and uh, this woman's name was Um Jamil, and she is the wife of Abu Lahab uh, she came to him and she said O oh Muhammad I hope that your devil has abandoned you now meaning I hope you're you're going back to the path of your ancestors to worship in the same idols and to go back to your fathers and grandfathers and great-grandfathers religion of idol worshiping I hope your devil has abandoned you now and left you alone uh, because I haven't seen him uh, or his effect on you for the past two three nights when the, when the Prophet وسلم, used to stand up for prayer they used to hear him right so she said I haven't heard you pray at night so it seems that he has abandoned you and left you alone so Allah Azza wa Jal revealed uh, this surah now we have to understand a very important point regarding the uh, revelation of Surah Al-Duha. Surah Al-Duha was one of the first surahs revealed upon Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was in the beginning of his mission, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. And at that time, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was faced with uh, different types of aggressions emotional physical he was belied he was rejected he was accused of being a magician a liar a soothsayer everything all you can think of right after having been called and named and known and been famous to be a trustworthy honest person amongst his people so in the midst of this he suddenly is accused of being a liar and everything he said is rejected Right? So you can imagine the, the state of, of mind and heart of the Prophet ﷺ, the emotions that were in his heart, right? And the suffering he was going through. So this surah in its totality uh, reflects a soothing to the heart of Muhammad ﷺ. It was something particularly revealed for him, alayhi salatu wasalam to release this and reveal him from this aggression, relieve him rather from this feeling of aggression and oppression, alayhi salatu wasalam. And to further help him go on with his mission 
and conveying the message uh, of, his, uh, of his Lord. It was a moral support, per se, from Allah Azza wa Jal directly to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The connection between Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his Lord was through revelations and through his meeting with Jibreel Alayhi Salam. So when this was delayed, and this was not the first time, there was a time before. This, this, is, this is the second time a delay happens in the descent of Jibreel with revelations. And at this time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, was uh, very saddened and wasn't certain what is going on, right? So you can imagine the pressure he's facing from his people, his emotions, and then suddenly the source of support that used to come interrupted. And then people started saying, we told you so. We told you it's a devil. All of this collectively in his going through his mind and heart put him in a, in a situation that was very saddening for him, alayhi salatu wasalam. He was suffering from the, the, the plotting uh, and the belying and the mockery of, of his people. And then this interrupts the, the source of support, moral support. The thing that proves him to be truthful and honest stops. So Allah Azza wa Jal sent down this surah to put his mind and heart to ease and to respond to the polytheists who said, your Lord has abandoned you. He hates you, so he has abandoned you. So Allah Azza wa Jal starts with an oath. Wow, in the Arabic language, is a letter used to make an oath as we said in different classes before. Wadduha, by Adduha. Adduha is the, uh, the short period of the early morning, uh, the brightness of that early morning. Allah Azza wa is swearing by the morning blazing glory, that beautiful, tranquil, pe peaceful part of the day, the very early part of the day. This in itself, and visualizing this in itself puts the heart to ease, calms it down. And we said before that when Allah Azza wa Jal, the exalted, makes an oath, he makes an oath, number one, to say something after the oath, which he wants to highlight and put emphasis on, and to show its greatness, or either all or one of them, and to show the greatness of that by which he made the oath. Which is one of the signs. See, al-duha is a cosmic sign that was created by Allah Azza wa Jal. It is caused by Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing for a reason here. So Allah Azza wa Jal swore by uh, al-duha. And then, he seconded it with another oath or an oath with another of his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى And by the night when it covers with darkness, uh, as the night envelopes and becomes still and calm. Again, a feeling of calmness is reflected into the heart of the Prophet وسلم, by another sign, by another one of the creations of Allah Azza wa Jal, first being al-duha, second being the night. Now, uh, the scholars, when they spoke about the issue of this oath, wal-duha wal-layl, they had different opinions as to what is the significance, what is uh, the message being sent here. Al-duha, represents daylight. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى represents the night. And these two combined make the day. Make the 24 hours rather. So it's a representation of human's life. Right? We are an accumulation of days and nights and at the end we die. So this is one significant 
opinion. Uh, one opinion signifies in the, the, uh, the day and the night, and al duha and al layl. Another said, al duha is a sign of light, and this light is the guidance brought by the Quran with which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent. Whilst the layl, the night, signifies the darkness of misguidance and polytheism upon which the Quraysh were. Now, after that, Allah Azza wa Jal gives the answer which is called the, the Jawab al Qasam in Arabic, which is the reason for the oath. Allah Azza wa Jal says, مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى Your Lord has not abandoned you. And He has not detested or hated you. As the Quraysh said, or as you might feel. So this oath Allah Azza wa Jal is making, is to tell the Quraysh, no, his Lord has not abandoned him. This delay was for a wisdom. And some scholars try to put or enumerate some of the wisdoms that might be behind the delay of the descent of Jibreel alayhi salam. You know, when, when the revelations used to descend upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they used to be very heavy. They used to be very hard. So the, the companions used to say he would sweat and sweat and so it was very difficult for him receiving revelations alayhi salatu wasalam. And at the, at the very beginning, this was a very challenging matter for the heart and the state of mind of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It's something that he hadn't experienced before. At the age of 40, he started receiving all of this. Right? So they said, Allah Azza wa Jal wanted to relieve him a little bit from this burden of receiving the revelations. And another reason, they said, is to make him long to meet Jibreel and long to hear what his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is saying. Uh, Ibn Hajar, may Allah have mercy on him, uh, is one of those who stated the uh, reason behind the, or the wisdom behind the delay uh, of the uh, revelation or of the descent of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah Azza wa Jal is telling Muhammad, rest assured, alayhi salatu wasalam, rest assured, caring for you, supporting you, is continuous. We have not abandoned you. We will continue to support you. We will continue to take care of you. We will continue to send revelations down upon you, O Muhammad. And uh, the belying and the false rumors spread by the Quraysh have no grounds, have no basis. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal could not have abandoned Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How can he abandon Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he, the Almighty, is the one who chose him for the message? So this is another message sent to Allah Azza wa Jal, from Allah Azza wa Jal to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How can we abandon you when we chose you from amongst all humans to be the chosen one for this mission, for this lofty rank of being a messenger representing or conveying on behalf of your Lord? Then Allah Azza wa goes on to say, and al akhirah al akhirah is commonly translated or interpreted to mean the hereafter yawmul qiyamah is better for for you than the first meaning it's better for you than uh, this worldly life 
So whatever you will get at, in the hereafter is better for you than whatever you can get uh, in this life. So Allah Azza wa Jalla is telling him that we will make the consequence, your consequence at the end, better than anything you, you could have ever thought. We will make it better than anything that you can obtain in this life. And the consequence can also mean the end of his mission in this life. We will make the consequence of your mission by supporting you, make it a successful one and making you victorious better than what you thought because in the beginning he was alone. He was followed by very, very small number of people. So to imagine the size and the geographical spread of the da'wah was beyond perception by anyone. So Allah Azza wa Jal is telling him that what you will get as a consequence, what you will get at the, at the end is better than what you thought. If imagine, and with this we'll conclude this first session. Imagine if one of the kings of this world, one of the richest people, uh, the wealthiest people in this world, walks up to one of us and say, uh, I am going to give you until you're pleased. I'm going to give you so much wealth you can never imagine until you yourself feel that you're satisfied and pleased. You'll feel that you possess the entire world in your hands because this is the richest, the richest person on the face of earth is telling me I'm going to give you everything until you feel that you don't need no more. Now imagine Allah, the Almighty, Allah the Exalted, the King, in whose hand is the treasures of the heavens on the, and the earth, is telling Muhammad, is telling one of his slaves, I'm going to give you until you please. What kind of uh, reassurance is that going to put in his heart? What type of motive? What type of incentive is this going to be to him والسلام, to continue to carry the mission on? Let's conclude with this and we will proceed in the following session inshallah.